Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, is the Rorschach test valid? So the Rorschach test is a projective instrument. It's a psychometric instrument that was designed to detect mental health disorders. And it's used today in a variety of settings, including in civil court and in some criminal proceedings, and of course in private practice and by institutions to determine if somebody has a mental health disorder and to determine if they have certain personality traits. The instrument was developed by Herman Rorschach, who was a psychoanalyst, and it was published in 1921. The scoring was updated since then, and it's actually a fairly complex instrument. So the way the Rorschach test works is there are 10 ink block cards, and an individual who's being assessed is asked to look at the cards and to tell the therapist, the counselor, whoever's giving the test, what they see. It's particularly complex to score, and it's based on normal responses versus abnormal responses. Now it's interesting, a lot of people believe that the ink blots were developed by placing ink on a piece of paper and folding it in half, but actually Herman Rorschach drew the ink blots. They are, however, designed to be ambiguous. He didn't draw them with any clear answer in mind, but rather they're open to interpretation, the way they're designed. So, does the Rorschach test work? Is it valid? Well, to answer this question, we have to first understand a little bit about reliability and validity. So, when we talk about psychometric instruments, or any instrument that's designed to measure anything, we have to understand the difference between reliability and validity. Reliability is how consistently a measurement measures something. So I'm going to use an example of a scale designed to measure weight. So if you had a scale and it always read 10 pounds lighter than your actual weight, it would be reliable. That's a consistent result. Every time you get on the scale, it's 10 pounds under the actual weight. Now validity is how well a measurement measures what it's supposed to measure. So that example with the scale, that scale may be reliable, but it's not valid. It's not providing the actual weight. It's 10 pounds under the actual weight. So in order for a psychometric instrument to be considered effective, it has to be both reliable and valid. Validity is a higher level. We could think of an instrument as needing to be reliable in order to be valid. So all valid instruments are reliable. Not all reliable instruments are valid. So this brings me to the Rorschach test. There are three areas that are problematic for the Rorschach test. The first is what we call inter-rater reliability. So let's say that we have one participant who's taking the Rorschach test, and we have five doctors that are going to administer this test. So individuals with a PhD in counselor education or psychology or some other related field. The scores that those five PhDs get from the same administration of the test are different in many cases. There's too much variation in how they interpret the scores. Now remember, this will be the same participant. This will be the same exact presentation. The same responses to each of the ink blots. Everything will be the same but you would get five different scores. That's low inter-rater reliability. The second problem is validity. Does the Rorschach test measure what it's supposed to measure? Remember, it was originally developed to detect mental health disorders, so it was a diagnostic instrument in terms of mental health disorders, not in terms of personality. But in terms of validity, it doesn't really tell us much about mental health disorders, and it tells us even less about personality traits. Yet again, it's used for both. There is some evidence to suggest that the Rorschach test does an okay job at detecting schizophrenia. Not great, but okay. With other mental health disorders, it has really weak detection abilities. Another problem in terms of its validity is it has a high false positive rate, meaning if somebody is in a normal range, and they're administered the Rorschach test, they're more likely to come up as having a mental health disorder than is acceptable. The false positive rate is too high. The third problem is 
that even if the Rorschach test was reliable and valid, all of the ink blots and all of the normal responses are public, and they have been public for quite some time. So anybody who wants to find out what the cards look like and wants to find out what the responses are that are considered normal can do so. So it doesn't have any ability to detect what somebody doesn't want it to detect. So the idea behind the Rorschach in terms of its usage was that it was subtle, meaning a little bit sneaky, that somebody would come in and they'd have a certain mental health disorder they're trying to hide or certain personality traits they're trying to hide, and the Rorschach test could beat that. It could get around that and detect what the person was really thinking. Well, it couldn't do that before the information was public, but it certainly can't do that with the information being public. Anybody can study the cards, study the responses, and beat the test. So again, any reliability and validity it may have had is now gone. Now, you might think that with me being so critical of the Rorschach test, and really the evidence is critical of the Rorschach test, that I don't think it's useful in clinical settings. But that's actually not the case. I think projective tests do have a place in therapy, but their place isn't to deceive people into giving responses they don't want to give. Their place isn't in detecting information people don't want to provide. The role of projective tests like the Rorschach test and other projective measures is to bring up interesting points in the therapeutic process to give somebody an opportunity to talk about their thoughts and feelings and behaviors by having them look at an ambiguous drawing and talking about it. It has a psychodynamic feel to it, like free association, but with a concrete image that they can examine and that the therapist can examine. So I think it does have a place and it's an interesting way to look at the workings of the unconscious mind and the subconscious mind. I don't think that the Rorschach test should be used in any type of civil or criminal proceeding or by anybody trying to figure out information that a client doesn't want to provide. It has no real value in terms of being subtle. I think its value is in being straightforward and opening up a dialogue between a client and a therapist. I hope you found this description of the Rorschach test to be interesting. Thanks for watching.